Recently, several Starship version 3 nose cones have been spotted at the Star Factory. These components are part of the latest iteration of SpaceX's Starship, which is expected to be among the first to make the journey to Mars. So, what makes these new nose cones so special? Let's take a closer look. Starship's nose cone is one of the most visually striking parts of the spacecraft, especially when compared to a traditional rocket. Simply put, the nose cone is the pointy section at the top. For a spacecraft as massive as Starship, it has to handle enormous stress. Not only does it need to cut through the atmosphere during launch with as little drag as possible, but it also has to survive the extreme heat and pressure of re-entry, so it's definitely one of the toughest parts of the spacecraft. The overall shape and profile of the nose cone remain mostly unchanged compared to earlier builds, which makes sense since there haven't been any major issues with the design. However, some observers say the nose cone now looks slightly slimmer and more elongated, possibly because the version 3 Starship is expected to be a bit taller. After all, Elon has always wanted the nose cone to be pointier, just like that running joke from the movie The Dictator. If you take a close look at the weld lines in the picture, you can actually see how Starship's nose cone is built. In earlier versions, the nose cone was made from short horizontal steel rings welded together. While that method worked, it had its limitations, especially when it came to handling the intense aerodynamic pressure and thermal stress during launch and re-entry. Now, we're seeing a major shift. The new design uses large, vertically aligned steel plates. This change results in fewer welds and a much cleaner, more polished surface, reducing potential failure points. Gone are the rough seams, visible welds, and uneven finishes of earlier builds. The main reason for the change is structural integrity. In the older horizontal ring design, the circumferential welds were weak spots that struggled under the extreme heat and stress of launch and re-entry. When Starship reaches orbital speeds of around 17,600 miles per hour, 28,300 kilometers per hour, the nose cone can face temperatures up to 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. 1,370 degrees Celsius, pushing those welds to the limit. The new vertical panel layout distributes stress more evenly, especially during ascent. The vertical welds run parallel to the airflow, which reduces drag, minimizes turbulence, and boosts overall flight efficiency. This means Starship version 3 will be tougher and more reusable, requiring less maintenance between flights. One more detail. Those weld lines look especially smooth because they're now created using robotic laser welding, which offers higher precision, cleaner finishes, and more consistent quality. As I mentioned earlier, the Starship nose cone is built to be extremely strong, and unlike a traditional fairing, it isn't jettisoned during flight. That makes it highly efficient in terms of structural reinforcement, helping to reduce both dry mass and interference with the payload volume. At the very top of the nose cone, you'll notice those small ear-like protrusions. These are actually three tiny hooks located right at the tip, used exclusively for lifting during assembly and initial stacking. Unlike earlier versions, these hooks likely aren't designed to lift the entire vehicle. What's clever is how minimal their impact is on the heat shield. Once the hooks are removed, it seems only a single thermal protection tile needs to be installed over each one, significantly simplifying post-assembly heat shield work. It's not visible in the current picture, but inside the nose cone will be one of Starship's most important internal components, the header tanks. You might wonder, we already have those massive main tanks. Uh, why do we need smaller ones? Here's a simple explanation. If you keep just enough propellant in the main tank for landing, it will slosh around inside the mostly empty tank, which can mess with the vehicle's stability and control. On top of that, feeding the engines from the main tank all the way through the landing would require keeping that huge tank pressurized the entire time, which is not ideal. It is far more efficient to move the landing fuel into a smaller, dedicated tank. This way, the main tanks can be run dry during ascent and you are left with a smaller, fully filled tank ready for landing. That approach just makes more sense, and clearly, SpaceX agrees.
Elon Musk has also pointed out another benefit, insulation. The smaller header tank can be better insulated to prevent cryogenic fuel from boiling off. Unlike the main tanks, which empty within minutes after launch, the landing fuel needs to stay cold for the entire mission. Instead of insulating a massive tank to protect a small portion of fuel, it is smarter to insulate a compact, separate tank. There is one more reason for the header tank placement. It helps with balance during re-entry. By positioning it at the very tip of the nose cone, Starship's center of mass is shifted forward. This is critical for the skydiver's style horizontal descent. If the landing fuel stayed in the aft main tanks, the vehicle would be too tail heavy for stable re-entry. Moving the fuel up front solves several engineering challenges at once. The version 3 header tank design potentially features larger or redesigned header tanks to support increased reliability for crewed missions or higher payload capacities. So far, all the observed Block 3 starships remain in the nose cone stage at the Star Factory, with no heat shield components installed yet. As for the Super Heavy Booster, we recently spotted the landing tank and transfer tube assembly of Booster 18, the first Block 3 version, being lifted into a vertical position for installation. This marks the first time we have seen this specific component on a version 3 booster. The number of changes in the version 3 Super Heavy Booster is remarkable. It's essentially a completely new vehicle with very little resemblance to its predecessor. One of the most noticeable upgrades is its increased height, now measuring 72.3 meters. It carries 3,650 tons of propellant and delivers 8,240 metric tons of thrust at liftoff. These figures match the specifications listed for Starship 2 in the April 2024 Starship update. Elon Musk has also mentioned that future versions of the booster could carry up to 4,000 tons of propellant. This enhancement would enable a liftoff thrust of up to 10,000 metric tons, nearly double that of the Saturn V. With that level of power, the booster could deliver up to 200 tons to orbit while remaining fully reusable. Without the constraints of reusability, payload capacity could potentially double. But that's not the only major upgrade. On the current version of the booster, the engine nozzles are visible, but the thrust chambers and turbo pumps are now enclosed within individually firewalled compartments. Elon noted that the base of the booster would appear somewhat bare. This is because it uses SpaceX's next-generation engine, the Raptor 3, which is designed without the need for external heat shielding around the thrust chamber or turbo pump. Instead, the engine includes integrated cooling circuits built directly into its structure. While the engine may appear simple externally, it's extremely complex on the inside. These internal cooling pathways improve both structural and thermal efficiency by embedding secondary circuits throughout the engine components. Elon also said this design would help reduce leaks. However, because the engines are now directly exposed to hot plasma during descent, any secondary structures or components that could burn off mid-flight must be eliminated. To handle this, the engine bay of the Super Heavy Booster is expected to be fitted with a new type of metallic heat shield. This is supported by images of Test Tank 17 seen at Starbase, which show several hexagonal metal heat shield tiles installed on the aft end of the tank. The interstage of the Super Heavy Booster has also seen a major redesign. All current Super Heavy Boosters now include a 1.8-meter tall vented interstage designed to enable hot staging. In this process, the booster shuts down all but its three center engines, while the second stage ignites its engines before separation. This allows the upper stage to push off from Boerf from the booster, adding a small but valuable thrust boost. The vented inner stage includes a dome that protects the top of the booster from the intense exhaust of the second stage's engines. It is important to note that the current expendable hot staging ring has always been a temporary solution. SpaceX's long-term goal is full reusability. The redesigned hot staging ring is built from structural struts that are permanently integrated into the booster. It appears taller, lighter, and much more open. This allows for more effective venting of the second stage's exhaust, while the two stages remain attached. The open design also helps protect the top of the booster and reduces the risk of flame blowback into the engine bay.
In addition to improving performance, this simplified design is easier to mass produce. This is crucial for SpaceX's ambition to eventually manufacture up to three starships per day. Another visible change is the booster's reduced number of grid fins. Instead of four, the new design features just three. Grid fins are essential for precision landing control, as seen on both Starship and Falcon 9. The switch to an asymmetric three-fin configuration likely reflects performance optimizations, suggesting the fourth fin was unnecessary. This reduces weight, but it remains to be seen how the new layout will perform in practice, especially given the proven success of the four-fin setup. Meanwhile, the Starship upper stage has received modest but meaningful upgrades. It now measures 52.1 meters in length and holds 1,550 tons of propellant. This is an increase of 50 tons over the Starship 2 specifications released in April 2024. The vehicle now delivers 1,600 tons of thrust. Block 3 Starships will also include an upgraded fully reusable heat shield. Elon Musk has emphasized that achieving full heat shield reusability is incredibly difficult. This is something even the Space Shuttle never accomplished. However, SpaceX remains committed to this goal. As Musk pointed out, it is not impossible. It is just extremely challenging. The heat shield must not only survive Earth re-entry, but also function effectively during Mars return missions. This requirement makes the task even more complex. The upper stage will also be powered by the new Raptor 3 engines. This upgrade addresses several major issues experienced with Block 2, particularly serious propellant leaks that contributed to recent test failures. Raptor 3 eliminates the need for traditional heat shielding around the engine area, reducing weight and improving reliability. For example, in the event of a minor fuel leak, Raptor 3 is designed to simply let the leaking fuel burn off in the surrounding plasma during flight. This poses minimal risk. In contrast, with enclosed engine compartments, even small leaks can quickly become dangerous. This open and robust design makes the propulsion system more fault tolerant and safer during operation. Block 3, Starship is expected to make its first flight by the end of this year. If you're as excited as I am, drop a let's go in the comments. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Your support means a lot and keeps us motivated. Thank you.